behind me, there are quite a few aircraft, and while they're made by a variety of companies and very widely in age, they all have one thing in common. None of them are made by Chinese companies. Given China's huge industrial ability, it's worth asking why China has yet to successfully create a commercial aircraft. It's not as though China hasn't tried before. As early as the 1970s, the Chinese government sponsored the development of commercial airliners, most notably the Y-10. The Y-10 was relatively similar to the Boeing 707, but it was substantially more expensive. In the end, it didn't make sense for Chinese airlines to buy the Y-10 because its operation was less profitable than that of its Western counterparts, so the program was discontinued. Following the failure of the Y-10, the Chinese government developed a three-step plan to foster a successful commercial jet industry. This plan involved China slowly increasing its ability to produce its own commercial aircraft through cooperation with foreign manufacturers. The first step of the plan was for China to assemble foreign aircraft in its own factories. The second step of the plan involved China designing and building its own aircraft with foreign assistance, and the third step of the plan envisioned China building its own aircraft with domestic expertise. While China had been relatively successful in implementing the first step of this plan through a partnership with McDonnell Douglas to produce MD-80s in China, subsequent progress has been weak to say the least. China is arguably stuck in the second stage of this plan with heavy reliance on foreign entities to supply the most complex parts of an aircraft. In an effort to produce commercial aircraft, the Chinese government created COMAC, China's state-owned commercial aircraft manufacturer, in 2008. To date, COMAC has produced just one jet airliner that has made it through the Chinese certification process, the ARJ-21. The ARJ-21 has relied heavily on foreign components and expertise to become airworthy. The fuselage of the ARJ-21 is based on the MD-90, the engines are supplied by GE, and Antonov Design Bureau assisted with the overall design. The aircraft sold slowly at first with Chengdu Airlines as the launch customer, although it's worth pointing out that Comac owns 50% of Chengdu Airlines, which may have influenced their decision to purchase the ARJ-21. Recently, sales have picked up slightly, with Air China, China Eastern, and China Southern all taking delivery of the aircraft, but given that all three of these airlines along with Comac are state-controlled, it is worth asking whether these purchases were motivated by sound business decisions, or if they were driven by politics and a desire not to purchase aircraft from Western manufacturers. The ARJ-21 has had other issues as well. It has been delayed numerous times, and there have been reports of quality issues on early aircraft, and although the ARJ-21 program was launched in 2002, the aircraft didn't fly until 2008. The biggest issue is the eight-year gap between the ARJ-21's first flight in 2008 and its entry into commercial service. Even though it first flew in 2008 and was initially scheduled to enter service in 2011, it was repeatedly delayed due to manufacturing issues, and despite the fact that it entered commercial service in 2016, Comac has produced just 38 of the ARJ-21 as of December 7, 2020. Thus, the ARJ-21 has largely failed, although China has its sights set elsewhere. More recently, Comac has embarked on the creation of an aircraft designed to compete with the Airbus A320 and the Boeing 737. The Comac C919 program was launched in 2009 to much fanfare. The C919 was China's most ambitious undertaking in civil aviation at the time, and would prove to be a major test of Comac's design and manufacturing abilities to create a meaningful competitor to the 737 and the A320. Comac set lofty goals for the project, anticipating a first flight in 2014 and a production capacity of 150 aircraft every year. The C919 will operate in a 3-3 configuration, and will seat up to 168 passengers with a range of about 2,500 miles. China's ambitions were set high for the project, with the C919's chief designer so confident in the aircraft that he was quoted in 2009 as saying, C919 comes after Airbus and Boeing, so you will have ABC in the aviation industry. One of Comac's biggest achievements on the C919 were the engines. The Leap 1C engines powering the C919 were claimed to be 10 to 15% more fuel efficient than those on the A320 CEO and 737 Next Generation. 
While there are other factors that contribute to fuel efficiency, this was undoubtedly one of Comac's strongest selling points for the C919. The next strong point of the C919 was that, unlike the ARJ21, the C919 received international attention along with interest from several foreign airlines, most notably Ryanair, although Ryanair has yet to commit to ordering any. The C919 did manage to attract commitments from two foreign airlines, Puren Airlines of Germany and City Airways of Thailand, but both carriers have subsequently ceased operations. In total, Comac received interest from airlines for the potential production of 1,065 aircraft as of December 7, 2020. This, unfortunately, is where the ambition of the Comac C919 starts to run into the realities of China's aerospace abilities. The first, and perhaps the most glaring issue, is that while the C919 is manufactured by Comac in China, it's hard to really call it a Chinese aircraft. The engines are made by American and European companies, and the avionics are made almost entirely by American companies. In fact, almost every major component on the C919 is imported, meaning that many of the parts that make up the C919 are borrowed from the Western supply chains that China hopes to compete against. The second issue with the C919 is the delays that have plagued the development of the aircraft. Like the ARJ-21, the C919 has not been without its fair share of struggles. Even though the Chinese government has given Comac an equivalent of $45 billion to produce commercial aircraft, the C919 has been seriously hampered by delays. The first flight of the C919 was delayed until May of 2017, and the aircraft has yet to be certified by Chinese authorities, and in part because of Comac's opaque business practices, it's hard to know how long it will take before Chinese aviation regulators approve the C919. At this point, the C919 is five years behind schedule, and even after it is eventually certified by Chinese regulators, it will take even more time before it could be certified to fly by American and European regulatory bodies. Because of these severe delays, Comac has fallen even further behind the competition. At this point, Boeing and Airbus have introduced the 737 MAX and A320neo to commercial service, which are even more efficient than the generation of aircraft Comac was targeting, making the C919 outdated before it even enters service. Even though the C919 might not disrupt the industry in the way that China had hoped for, it shows that China is heading in the direction of competitive commercial aircraft production, and while that day may still be quite a few years in the future, China is likely to keep climbing the ladder of aerospace expertise. In part because of their current lack of expertise in commercial aircraft, Comac has started collaborating with the Russian United Aircraft Corporation in 2014 on a wide-body jet called the CRAIC CR929. This aircraft would compete with the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350, and if successful, would be China's most advanced commercial aircraft so far. While this partnership is likely to be mutually beneficial for Russia and China, the development of the CR929 has been hindered by political woes, resulting in substantial delays. The CR929 was initially planned to begin deliveries in 2025, but Russia's UAC announced in June of 2019 that the first plane was scheduled to be finished in 2027. Given Comac's history of delays in production and the diplomatic disputes getting in the way of the CR929's development, the CR929 risks falling victim to the same kind of delays that severely hurt the ARJ-21 and the C919, even if China and Russia can put their political differences aside. Despite the slow progress of China's commercial aircraft industry, Chinese aircraft will likely become successful, boosted by a government that is willing to support the industry and a massive airline industry hungry for aircraft. While their recent attempts have been largely unsuccessful, China's commercial aircraft sector will likely see growth in the future as the Chinese government flexes its financial and diplomatic muscles to support it.